time on round sailing. We celebrated Christmas with our families. On New Year's Eve, we went out on our first sail with round two, which ended in another way than we had planned. sister's uh, store because in her basement uh, we are keeping all our stuff from old Ron. all the stuff that we shipped uh, across on the ocean all the way from LA to to here everything arrived uh, so now it's time to go through all the stuff and see if there is something that we don't need and how much we have and where to keep it on board the uh, round two. Yuan picked up the pallet a few months ago and it arrived in ah, one so piece. Yeah. Yuan's sister Cecilia opened up her store Arsenic a year ago. It's a store for subcultures, with hand-picked, eco-friendly products, all from vintage clothing to records and jewelry. Cecilia is carrying Vera's cousin, who will come in only a couple of weeks. Okay, a lot of stuff. <laughs> These are some of the tools that we brought back, took back from Mexico. And uh, yeah, I'll have to try to bring this down a bit because there's a lot of tools, especially power tools. And some of the hand tools are not in very good condition, a bit rusty and uh, yeah, let's see if we could uh, yeah. Because the tools we had on uh, on the other boat took up a lot of a lot of place in the boat, and uh, I mean obviously it's nice to have a lot of tools, but maybe not that amount of tools. So we'll see. Yeah, a lot of these tools has been with me for many many years on all of my boats really. So that's why some of them are a bit rusty and I've been sailing with these tools for over 20 years now <laughs> so maybe it's time to for an update on some of them <laughs> this rivet tang I bought in the Canaries over yeah just 20 yeah over 20 years ago when I sailed to the Caribbean the first time when I was 22 at La Gomera really good tool this type of tool I can really recommend having it aboard because a normal rivet tang you can't uh, really use for the the larger um, pop rivets. But with this one you get a lot of force if you need to uh, do some work on the mast. And it has held up quite well, I think, this tool. If I rem remember correctly, I paid around 50 euros for this one. Um, 20 years. There are some missing parts on it, but it's still working, so... I think we'll keep it. And we've used it on old run a lot. Too. Yes, yes, we used it a lot on old run because uh, pop rivets we had a lot of on uh, that uh, aluminium hull. <laughs> There's a lot of power tools and I think this one is one of those that we are going to leave home because it takes up a lot of space especially with the tracks and I don't I can't see us using this on the new boat uh, when we left in 2016 
we had a plan of maybe stopping and working somewhere, so that's why I brought all my tools, all the power tools I had. And uh, which has been great because we really have been using them on the boat. But the planer is a nice tool, but I guess this is also a tool that will leave behind because you don't really use it that often. So We've come a little bit on the way of to organize. This whole pile here, how many boxes do we have? Seven, nine boxes and two plastic boxes. This one, that's all going to the boat. This box we will, um, things we will save, but not, on the, not have it on the boat. And then we have this here with tools that we have now gathered and uh, you and will come here another day and just go through it even more to see what we will bring on the boat and uh, what will stay behind. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. So. I think we're done for today. We've been here now for a couple of hours. closer to the day when we are moving aboard round two. So now we're actually heading to Ikea where we have uh, some things that we're gonna buy for the boat like pillows and duvets and uh, some stuff for the kitchen and yeah. We're also going to a store called Biltema which is a little bit of a heaven for uh, especially boat people or for anyone who's looking to do like stuff in their home or anything because there you can find everything to a very good price and it's it's a store that we've often talked about when we've been sailing in different countries like thinking oh if we only had a bill tema close by where we could buy this thing <laughs> And I think we're gonna have lunch at Ikea and we'll probably be meatballs, as the tradition say. Biltema means car theme, and they do have a big car gear department, but also so much more. Ska det bli gott med semla? Ja, ja semla är en, en tradition som Johan försökte göra när man var på Irland. Och det äter man en dag till januari för dag. För då finns en dag som heter Fettesdagen, typ ja, fattig. <laughs> So semla is basically just a, a, a wheat bun with cardamom and then you have very important the almond paste and whipped cream like best uh, quality whipped cream and on top you have the little lid and uh, with the um, powdered sugar on top. Now Vera is picking up. Get 
on and off the boat. Because here, because in Sweden, Scandinavia, we don't have any tides. So most small are, tides. Very, very small tides. So most marinas are like these on fixed poles, fixed docks. So then you have to jump when the water is moving because if we have like northerly winds, uh, the water gets higher in here because it pushes in a lot of water. These are some of the things that we got today. We have the fake plastic plants, which I call sailing proof plants. First time I have plastic plants, but I think they look really nice. And with a plastic uh, pot, so they are really light. I will go, go really nice, I think. And uh, now I just have to come up uh, with a way how to fix them in one place so we can keep them there even when we go out sailing. Maybe we'll put some uh, glue, some um, suction cups here, attach them like that, or um, something else that won't affect the varnish. We have these two here. And then we got some a cutting board in wood, uh, some uh, food containers, um, four small mirrors, mirrors that we'll see if we can uh, get up on the back of a door, um, but they might be too big. We have that uh, toilet uh, cleaner, uh, which you also attach with like a suction cup. And then we got these which are quite interesting. It's um, a light, LED light, battery driven, and it's sensor motion. So we're thinking of putting these in some different um, cupboards and closets where it's pretty dark. So the idea is you attach them like that, and when you open the door, you might have to move your hand a little bit. We'll see how, how they work, but then they, you will have light in there. And they turn off after like um, three minutes, I think. These lights are perfect because this way we don't have the hassle of, uh, you know, running cables or, uh, you know, with electricity and stuff like that. It's just battery. And we got some uh, rechargeable batteries as well. Um, so we got actually 10 of them. And uh, Johan will uh, install one later, so we'll try it out and see if we like it or not. I have installed one of those IKEA LED lights in here, in this closet. And uh, I hope it will work. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't possible to install it exactly the way it should be. Because there is a motion detector on the actual light and that should be uh, against the door so it can see the movement when you open the door. And I'm not sure if it will work the way it should now, but uh, let's try out. <laughs> Apparently not. But if you put your hand, it will turn on. So it, it works okay and you can... Uh, you can of course use it manually as well, just turn on and off the light or use the motion sensor and just put your hand next to the to the light. Uh, but I guess uh, in the closet back in the bedroom we can put it another way and maybe there it's possible to put it next to the door. Uh, so the motion sensor will work better. But the light is pretty good and uh, they weren't that expensive. Uh, 79 svenska kronor, so that's around eight nine dollars so pretty cheap and uh, they will last a very long time because it's lithium batteries rechargeable so so this closet is actually a drying closet as well there's a outlet for the heater so it gets really warm and dry in here so it's a perfect place to put uh, wet clothes if it's been raining outside put your foul weather gear in here and it will dry quickly and it's also an area we've been thinking of, it could be possible to put a small top-loading uh, washing machine in here. But I don't think we'll do it because over the years we've been sailing now, we have found out that you can find a laundrette in most places in the world. And now with Vera, of course, there will be more things to wash. But it's small stuff, so I think we can do that by hand. <laughs> what do you say, Molly? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and it's good to have that space for other things. Yeah. 
Because so, it's and it's pretty small. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty deep and but I, very narrow. Yeah, a top loading machine would be possible, but it's just another thing, you know, that you have on the boat that can break down. And, yeah. One thing on the boat that doesn't work very well. There's something wrong with both these burners, especially this one. Uh, and I think the former owners have the same problem, so I guess it's something wrong with the with the stove. So I'll see if we can fix it. Otherwise, we might buy a new one because this is something we use every day. These are the five tools that I picked out from the tools that we had in the basement and also on the, our last boat, Ron. Uh, and like you know, we had a lot of tools on our last boat, uh, around 25. With these five tools that I picked out here, uh, you can do most of the stuff that you will find yourself doing on a boat when you're away long distance cruising. Um, I think I will pick maybe a couple of more, more tools, but these, with these five, I think uh, you will be good. So this is my tip. Um, first off, you need to have a good angle grinder on board. Uh, nowadays you could pick a battery driven one. Uh, they are as strong as the quarter one nowadays with the lithium batteries. This one is on 1500 watts. It's on a 125 millimeter or 5 inch. And an important feature <clears throat> on an angle grinder when you are bring it, bringing it on the boat is to have variable speed and also constant speed or constant electronics on it. That way you can use the same angle grinder for a lot of different applications on the boat. You can use it for uh, cutting different materials like uh, yeah, aluminium, steel, stainless, plastic, uh, and also wood actually uh, and you can do some grinding different type of grinding and but also you can do um, uh, like this with um, the top size if you do um, what do you call it polishing you can take down the speed really low but you still have a strong machine because you have the constant uh, electronics in it so you can do um, yeah polishing with stuff like this so that's really neat um, and it's always great when you can have a tool on the boat that can do many different types of uh, jobs. Because that way you will save space and uh, that's always a good thing on a boat. Next up you need to have a really good jigsaw. Because a jigsaw is the best and most versatile cutting tool uh, you can have in my mind. Uh, and again, I think on a boat it's great to have a battery driven one. And like I said with the angle grinder nowadays the battery driven ones are as strong as the quarter ones um, and with the jigsaw you can cut all types of different materials you will find yourself cutting in uh, on a boat stainless steel aluminium wood plastic there's a blade for it on a jigsaw um, and i mean you don't need to have a jigsaw but if you're planning to do a lot of uh, altering on your boat, maybe you're working a bit on your interior or stuff like that. Uh, Yigsaw is a great tool to have because you can do long cuts uh, even if it's battery driven. So really nice tool to have. Uh, another cutting tool that is also nice to have is a multi cutter. This is a bit more of a special tool uh, and it's mainly good for making cuts where you want to do a cut straight into a wall like if you're installing something on the mast you have mo more control in my mind with a tool like this if you want to do a small precision cut uh, maybe you don't have the room to make the cut with the jigsaw then the multi-cutter is perfect uh, you can also do scraping there's a 
tons of different uh, blade for machines like this. Uh, so a really versatile tool as well uh, to have on board. And you also need to have a really good drill driver. I mean for all the you know drilling holes on board. And it should be a strong one so you can use it for both normal drills but also for hole saws and stuff like that. If you're changing like the through holes on the boat, this is a perfect tool for that. Um, if you can find one, it's great to have one with the EC motor or a brushless motor with a permanent magnet. Um, because that way, in a pinch, in an emergency, you could actually use it underwater um, for a short while. I mean, of course, this tool isn't made for that, but it will work for a while even underwater. Uh, and also the motor, uh, when it's an easy motor, <coughs> it's uh, uh, not as sensitive to moisture as a brushed motor. So, also a great tool to have. And make sure to get the drill driver with a 13 millimeter shock. Because that way you have a lot more different applications you can use it for. Last but not least, you should have a good sander. And you shouldn't have a belt sander or a square sander or anything like that. You should have an orbital sander. This is the only sander you need to have on your boat. With this sander you can do all the different applications. Uh, it's fine enough so you can use it for varnish, preparing for paint and stuff like that. But it also has a removal rate uh, which is good enough uh, for sanding your teak takes or taking away the anti-fouling below the waterline. A really versatile tool. Uh, make sure to get the quality one because like you know sanding takes some time and the engine in, or the motor in this tool uh, will be running a lot. Um, and that goes to say for all of these tools get quality tools. Um, you don't need to have Bosch tools. I just happen to have Bosch tools because I used to work for Bosch. Um, but whatever brand you get, get quality tools because <clears throat> you don't want the tools to break down in, when you're trying to fix your boat, maybe in a remote place, in an emergency, and you really need your tools. So buy quality tools. And that's not only for the power tools, it's only for all the tools you have on, on the boat, also for your hand tools, it's good to have quality ones. So this was my top five tools to bring on board, power tools. Uh, maybe you have a any different opinion on which tools you should have on board. Um, I mean, of course, you can bring more tools than five, but um, you know, on a boat, space is always at the premium. So if you want to keep it to five, which would have been your favorites to bring? I think that with these five tools, you can do most of the jobs that you find yourself doing on a boat when you're away cruising. So, in my mind, this is the perfect pick. Your support means the world to us. So thank you for watching, subscribing, liking and commenting on this video. See you next week!